Hello and welcome to another session in English language. And today we are going to be considering different aspects of English. The first aspect is on structure. We are going to continue from where we stopped in the previous class on punctuation marks. We are going to look at the use of the comma, the use of the question mark, the semicolon today. And also, they're going to look at a register on the press. But before that, let us review the previous lesson. Welcome back. And like I said, today we are considering an important part of English, and that is on structure. We're going to look at the punctuation marks. So let's see what are the uses of these punctuation marks. Because every sentence you make or you form without punctuation marks could have meanings. Okay, so punctuation marks are integral parts of English language. Okay, so let's see that. That punctuation marks, like we said, are the marks or signs inserted in your in the piece of what writing. Okay. Don't forget that. Okay. And I told you that it's an integral part of English. Okay. It's an integral part for effective presentation of what your idea. For instance, look at what is on your screen. Now, there is no punctuation in this expression. Okay. Now, I can. Decide to write it in two ways. Okay, let me change that expression now. Now, a woman without her man is nothing. Now, let me remove um, that um, article A and replace it with um, the possessive case. Now, look at the first expression. A woman without her man is nothing. A woman without her man is nothing. So, a woman without a husband, that's what we are saying, is nothing. But look at the second expression. A woman, comma, without her, comma, man is nothing. Okay? A woman without her man is nothing. So, he, the first one is emphasizing that Without a man, a woman is what? Nothing. But the second one is emphasizing that without a woman, a man also is nothing. So you can see the importance of the punctuation marks. So let's start off with the comma. Now with the comma, you can use that to mark off in uh, words in a list. For instance, she gave us she gave us two pencils, four rulers, and pens. Okay, so two pencils comma four rulers and pens so it shows a list we went to market and we bought oranges mangoes pineapples so each of those lists we put a comma also you use to mark off phrases or clauses having seen her son she felt relieved so that is an expression it's a clause having seen her son she felt relieved even though this is the subordinate clause and this is the independent or what main clause. Okay, so let's look at other uses of the comma. We also use it to mark off non defining relative clauses. Mr. Kagbo, who happens to be a lawyer, is aware of our situation. So the non defining relative clause is who happens to be a lawyer. So you can read without this expression Mr. Kagbo is aware of our situation. Okay. So we can also use the comma to mark off clauses linked by a conjunction such as and or but as for. We give an example. They have been complaining about their flight since five years ago, but unfortunately, the management has not paid any attention. So you can see that there's a comma here. There's also another one here. Okay. So still on that, we go into, we also use the comma in a direct speech. So to separate the speech in quotes from the non-speech. 
she said. Run as fast as you can. Now, we are separating the long speech there is she said. Run as fast as you can is the utterance she actually was made. Okay, so we have the semicolon also. We use the semicolon to separate two main clauses that are not linked by a conjunction. We gave an example here. She looks awful. She needs a shower. Okay, she looks awful. She needs a shower. So you can see the quotation, the semicolon here. Okay. So in place of a comma, we can also use um, the semicolon to separate parts of what a sentence. For instance, we have he made up his mind to take the bull by the horns. He would purge the country no matter the cost. So you can see that we have you know different parts of what the sentence. Okay, but because this. Um, sentences are separated by the word semicolon. Then we have the question mark. We use the question mark to ask direct questions. Have you had lunch? Have you had your bath? Okay. Then we also use it to express doubt. He was in Toronto. He was in Banjul. We also use the question mark at the end of the question tag. BC left late. Didn't she? So, didn't she is the question tag, which requires an answer. Yes, she did or no, she didn't. Okay, so we have the colon. The colon is often first used to introduce a list. These are the items they are asking for. So, you can see the items. We have bicycle, we have two goats, and four gallons of what? Palm oil. So we use the semicolon to what introduce the list. Okay, then we also use the, uh, the colon rather to introduce a phrase or a clause which supplies additional information. For instance, he could not leave her in spite of her what misbehavior. He lacked the courage. So we, this he lacked the courage is the additional what information trying to give us evidence why he could not leave her okay because he lacked courage okay so that's that so quickly let's move into what you call register on the press and i know when we say the press we mean that media or agency that collects news items and disseminates them to the members of the public okay So let's look at words that are associated with that. We have number one, a pressman. A pressman. So who is a pressman? A pressman is a journalist. Okay? A pressman is a journalist. Then we also have journalism, the art of collecting and writing news. The art of collecting and writing news stories for newspapers. Magazines, radio is known as what? Journalism. Okay? Then we also have what you call the newsreel. The newsreel is a short film of news that was shown in the past. Alright? In the cinema or in the movie theater. Then we also have what you call a commentator. A commentator is an expert on a particular subject who writes or talks about a particular segment of what news okay a, an expert who writes or talks about a particular segment of news is a commentator okay it could be in the area of sports it could be the area of what politics so we have also what you call the typesetter a typesetter is actually a person or a machine or a company that prepares a book for printing so it could be a person, it could be a machine, and it could be a what a company that is what the type setter. So with this, we have come to the end of today's lesson, and I believe you learned a whole lot. So thank you very much for joining the class. To refresh your memory and recall all that was taught in this lesson, I would encourage and love that you take the test that would appear on your screen.